Hello everyone, my name is Andrei. I'm a researcher at the University of Manchester, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. And today I want to present you the recent work done uh, by my team where we developed a tool for interpreting the value of flexibility in security constraint transmission expansion planning. Uh, as you can see, here is the title of the presentation, and I think it would be useful if we first discuss, yeah, uh, if we first discuss these two terms. First, uh, what is flexibility? Uh, what do we mean by flexibility and why do we need to estimate its value? And second term, security constraints. Why do we need to use uh, planning models with security constraints incorporated? So, starting with the flexibility. By flexibility, we usually mean new resources emerging in transmission and distribution systems that have the technical ability to adjust their power exchange with the grid, which means that they can uh, control, manage their power generation or consumption. Some examples of uh, this technology, battery energy storage systems, uh, distributed energy resources, electric vehicles, and other demand response uh, programs that can shift their demand over time. And usually such uh, devices, flexible devices, are considered valuable for power systems because they can produce um, system level services, for example, for energy balancing. And in this particular work, we want to estimate the value of these services for transmission expansion planning task. And uh, the next term, security constraint planning, usually this means that we include the N minus one security criterion. And this criterion means uh, that system operation must remain feasible for any single contingency. So if we lose any single element of the system, the operation still should be feasible. And this criterion becomes especially important due to the ongoing integration of stochastic renewables. And I will show you in the moment that uh, formulating and solving such uh, planning models with security constraints is a very challenging task. Okay. So here I, pre I prepared for you a simple illustrative example. It's a small system with five substations, uh, four generators, six lines, and two uh, demands located at bus number one and bus number two. And our task for this system is to suggest an economically efficient and uh, secure uh, transmission expansion plan. So what are our investment options? We can reinforce each of these lines, as you can see here by, uh, shown by the dashed lines. And also we can build two flexibility providers, again at bus one and bus two. And uh, how do we solve this problem? Uh, well, first, let me say that uh, this particular picture, we can say that this is the uh, normal operation state because all elements uh, are working, there are no failures. And this is, uh, this is quite uh, an easy task, but to guarantee the security of this system, we need to consider some sub-problems. Uh, for example, we can say contingency number one, uh, where one of the lines, in this case, line number one, two fails. So we don't have this line anymore. And we need to check that the plan that we develop uh, is feasible for this contingency. But there is another contingency, let's say contingency number two, and this line fails. And again, we need to verify that our plan uh, is feasible for another contingency. And I think you know where this is going. For this simple system, we have six contingencies uh, corresponding to failure of uh, each of these lines. And not only we have to verify these uh, contingencies, we have to solve these uh, six sub problems simultaneously because we must uh, guarantee that our plan meets the N minus one security criterion. And this is why formulating and solving such problems is a very challenging task. And uh, industry and academia obviously know how to deal with this. There exist some optimization models. And for this particular case, uh, we can solve the cost minimizing model that uh, finds the cost optimal solution. And the solution for this system will be to reinforce these three lines as shown by green color, and also invest in two flexibility providers. So at first glance, this solution makes sense because we build new lines transmitting uh, power from generators to loads. We also build flexibility providers. So the, the solution is reasonable. But in our work, we argue that uh, this solution is not enough. And there are several very important questions uh, remaining. Uh, for example, let me. OK. 
Okay, sorry. The questions do not appear. Okay. Yeah, here are the questions. So, uh, very important question. How do we prioritize these lines? How do we prioritize these investments? So, we know that this solution is optimal. We like these investment options, but we cannot build all of these lines overnight. Uh, in any planning project, uh, there will be some stages, there will be some budget uh, constraints. So we need to prioritize these options and we must be sure that this is the, one of the lines is the most useful one and we must build it first. To do this, we need to uh, calculate some metrics, for example, contributions of these lines and flexibility providers to avoided load curtailment or to system cost reduction. And once we uh, did this, uh, another interesting question is, okay, we have flexibility providers, we have traditional line reinforcement, which option is better? What should we recommend to the system operator? Again, single optimal solution that you see here with these green lines doesn't really explain this. And final, very interesting question that we ask in this work is, uh, which investment options have the highest synergistic capability? And by synergistic, I mean that some lines of flexibility providers are not only useful on their own, but they also bring significant contributions uh, in combination with other investments. And uh, in our work, we try to address these questions. So to thoroughly uh, analyze usefulness and contributions by different investment options, we actually need to solve a very challenging combinatorial problem with two to the power of n combinations of investments. In this work, we use a cooperative game theory framework I don't have time now to speak about uh, cooperative game theory, but I just want to tell you that these combinations in literature are called coalitions. And then we analyze uh, multiple coalitions and we estimate contributions of uh, these investment options to the coalitions. And then we can judge on the usefulness of different investments. And this is what our tool does. It iteratively solves the planning problem for different coalitions of investments, and we can analyze their usefulness. Yeah, and for the five-bus system, we have eight investment options, if you remember. So we have to analyze 256 possible coalitions. And let's check the results for this system. Uh, this figure might look complex, but actually these uh, violin plots, they show the distribution of uh, contributions by different investments. So you can see the investment options here, lines, flexibility providers. And here are contributions, their contributions to avoided load curtailment. And now we can see the range of possible contributions and we can also see the density of uh, these contributions and we can see that flexibility providers are quite useful in this case and also one of the lines, line 1-4, is also very useful. And then we can repeat the simulations but for a different metric, uh, not for load curtailment but for system cost reduction. Uh, we can see that the figures are quite uh, similar and again line 1-4 uh, is the best option and we can say that uh, this option has the highest uh, synergistic capability, uh, which means it brings a lot of contributions uh, on its own and also in combination with other investments. And in this particular case, this line should be recommended uh, for the system planner to be prioritized. Uh, then we repeated the simulations for the UK transmission system. So let me go back. Okay, it is lagging again. So. Uh, this is the simplified uh, transmission system of the UK, represented by 30 substations. And you can see here a graph. Uh, in this graph, the size of the nodes corresponds to the load located in the system. So we can see that uh, there is more load located in the south. And uh, we selected seven uh, lines, uh, seven investment options, the most impactful options to perform this coalitional analysis. So again, you can see in this figure investment options and you can see contributions to avoided load curtailment. And it becomes very clear that four flexibility providers located in the south uh, of the UK are very useful. They lead to significant uh, load curtailment reductions and also one of the transmission lines in the south uh, quite useful and can be recommended uh, to be prioritized. We repeated the simulations again in terms of the costs and got quite a similar picture, but this time uh, quite an uh, unexpected uh, result is that line 7-8 actually in the north brings the most contribution in terms of cost. So this is interesting because we have different metrics, different objectives of the system planner, 
And we can see that uh, sometimes different lines of flexibility providers can uh, have uh, completely different contributions to these objectives. In this case, uh, this particular simulation shows that one line in the north is very useful for reducing cost of the system. Uh, now coming to the conclusions, uh, in this work we demonstrate that interpretable uh, models are needed for transmission system planning. It is not enough to solve uh, the planning problem only once. We need multiple uh, solutions. We need to estimate contributions of different investments to uh, suggest uh, uh, a way of prioritizing them. And yeah, the only problem of this is that such simulations are very uh, computationally challenging and uh, because we need to run models, planning models sometimes hundreds of times and future research will focus on overcoming these challenges. And the final point, as I mentioned, uh, an interesting highlight that flexibility providers and line reinforcement can have completely different contributions depending on the objectives of the system planner. So it's hard to get uh, to give here some general advice. The results can be very case specific. And next should be the last slide. Yeah, I want to say that uh, the code for this tool is published online on GitHub. We call this tool ISCTP, which stands for Interpretable Security Constraint Transmission Expansion Planning. So if you uh, are interested in this research, uh, feel free to check the tool. And also we submitted results to the conference, which will take place next summer in Paris. And again, the manuscript is available online, so you can see more details about these simulations uh, in the manuscript. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, yeah, thank you. I see that you know cooperative game theory. We use many solutions, but uh, to start with, we use the Shapley value. So if you can see here, uh, the, the whole range of contributions, we can see also individual contributions means to coalition of one. Uh, they are joint contributions to the grant coalition. And yeah, we calculate the Shapley value as well as the average of these solutions, which is quite a good metric to, to analyze. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. As I understand, you are asking about how we model future and time domain simulations. So I should say, even though the security constraint model is very complex, uh, the way that we model the future now is not that complex. Basically, we, now we have only one scenario in the future and we do not consider time domain simulations like 24 hours. We just know that there is the worst case scenario in the future when we have some load increase. So we plug in this scenario here, these loads, let's say generation loads. And this is simple, but then we add this layer of complexity and this collision analysis, and we get interesting results in terms of ranking uh, contributions of investments. But yeah, the model can be complexified if we add more hours, more scenarios. I, I think you're asking this, right? About future scenarios. Yeah, that's great. Also, uh, sometimes Okay. 
Okay, I, I, I agree. Yeah, but we use only one scenario for now. Thank you. Network topology. Yeah. So mm, I, I, I mean, what side of the model, modeling are you interested in? We have like traditional math power files. They are parsed into tables, and we have like branch table lines, uh, demand generators, and yeah, we have topology. And for this topology, we have one more table uh, which we call contingencies. So for this case, we have six lines and six contingencies, but we can reduce number of contingencies, say like, let's consider only two contingencies. So do you manually sort of create that, that sort of interconnectivity map of, of, of what assets you want yes. to Yeah. Yeah, like significant time was spent to prepare the case studies, uh, yeah. the network data, mm -hmm. test some contingencies, and then plug all of this into the coalitional analysis. But yeah, preparing the, the case requires some work, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.